are so glad that you have joined us this is a podcast a new episode where you should feel welcome loved and cared for as the girls would like to say you here are to be welcomed loved and cared for my name is nick (laughs) my name is nicole and i am mel and we are youth leaders here at nmbc and we are so glad to come together uh, to provide for you some little a little entertainment but obviously an opportunity to think through life uh, to think through it in a way that points your heart and your life uh, towards following after Christ. And so uh, it is the end of the summer. Can you believe it? I know. It's crazy. So wild. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> For those watching at home, no, Melissa just believed it. She's just like, yeah, I, I do believe it's the end of the summer. I mean, Starbucks came out with their pumpkin cream flavors. Yay. So I'm excited. It's great. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, we are not only hydrated by uh, expensive, weird type milkshakey, green, brown, sand, ice, pumpkin, ice seasonal gourds. Ice uh, chai. <laughs> but we also have uh, the big guy, the the bedwetter the uh, here, and that is a gallon of milk Do present not in talk the middle. About milk that <laughs> Don't get it twisted. It's whole milk. <laughs> All right, <laughs> we have a whole gal- milk. We have a- the best milk around. Not two percent. <laughs> when you're walking down the supermarket aisle, what milk do you go for? You go for the one percent, the two percent? No, you always go for the whole milk. It's rich. It's creamy. It's nutritious. It's full fat. It is good for the soul, <laughs> and that's all I have to say about whole milk. Don't forget red cat. That's it. All right. I'll, I'll be very honest with you. I was a 1% Are you person. you going to have some milk? I'll have some. I was a 1% person for a long time. Um, having children okay. has forced me to a 2% <laughs> lifestyle. Uh, uh, whole, li- whole lifestyle. Frankie's into it's the much whole better. milk, though. All Salute. right, drink it. My bad. 100 years. Fun, fa- fun fact about Frankie. <laughs> um, she <laughs> she used stop. to call milk. She used to call milk for the longest time cookie milk. Because there was a co- a big cookie on the milk that you guys would get. I think it was the uh, milk from ShopRite. Stop, that's cute. And then she'd be like, cookie milk, cookie milk. And like me and Andy were so confused for the longest time. I'm like, what is cookie milk? Until <laughs> one day we put, you know, two and two together where there was a giant old cookie on the carton of this milk. And she associated that milk with the cookie, which is, I mean, genius. Milk by association. <laughs> this milk is delish. It is very good. Whole milk is the best way. Drink it up. Cows died for this. Ice cold. It's a little warm. Isn't that how milk okay, is made? Okay. Wait, this milk's a little warm. <laughs> it's not that warm, <laughs> but I also got it like a half hour ago and it has to be in the this fridge. This milk is warm. We've been here for a <laughs> half hour. Did you see me put it in the fridge? It's been on the table for 30 minutes. Okay, this is literal warm. <laughs> it's not warm. Milk Stick like around on the for stove. the for the next episode. <laughs> it's dramatic. When we all have diarrhea. <laughs> Listen. I, when I was in high school, I used to drink almost a gallon a day. Yeah, yeah there's a purpose for this. Uh, Melissa, <laughs> one of our youth leaders, who is uh, trying her hand at becoming a part of this, <laughs> this uh, podcast. You know, podcast life, uh, is obsessed with milk. Uh, you may remember her from certain sh- shows and videos as Milk. Uh, <laughs> Don't that, act like I'm the only one obsessed. No, there's a lot of people in our youth <laughs> group that have unhealthy obsessions over uh, milk. But... Uh, but yeah, she came and she brought milk and uh, brought her bubbly personality and Aww. yeah. So that was so kind. Thanks. I know that was like <laughs> uns- like you know very uncharacteristically uncharacteristically kind. nice of you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, so <laughs> we have a uh, a school year to look forward to and kind of like the sadness in our hearts that summer <laughs> is kind of over. And, and we all appreciate summer. We had an episode where we talked about preparing for summer, and we warned you that the summer would go by really quickly. And guess right? It guess r- guess what? We were right. <laughs> guess right? It did. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So what we, we want to do is we want to talk about uh, deal with it. The, the school year is coming, and we have to kind of get ourselves ready for it. Do you guys remember when you were high school or middle school students and like that reality of man, school's in less than a week. It's a couple days away. It's tomorrow morning. Do you remember that whole experience? 
I do. But Mel is probably closer to that memory. Yeah, I'm a little bit younger than you. (laughs) I mean, I remember, like, the first week, you had, like, the beginning school jitters. And then after a week, you started to get, like, work. And you're like, nah, this ain't it. Like, (laughs) (laughs) bring me back to the summer. I used to, no joke, maybe until up until high school, I used to cry in the car (laughs) every first day of school. I don't know why I was just like, I don't know what was going on in my head, but I would cry. Anxious? Every single first day of school. Yeah. No, I was excited. And I would have, and like, I would have to sing in the car with my mom. Really? (laughs) You weren't excited at all to like see your friends? Um, I don't know. I don't really remember. I just remember crying. Every what were you day. singing in the car? Like, you know, like some type of like Polka? Bible song. Oh. <laughs> you listen to Bible songs? Yeah. Like I was, I feel like like right up until high school. That's a little embarrassing to admit, but. No, I think it's fine. That's my truth. This is a safe place. <laughs> I mean, I feel like once I got into the school routine, I used to drive like in silence because I was still like half asleep <laughs> and then I'd show up in class and be like I'm here and that was it I would put on my hood and put on 8 Mile on my iPod okay and I would prepare myself that's for, lose lie. myself lose myself <laughs> and I would go out I'd go out there and just be like I'm gonna I'm gonna make <laughs> make this the best school year ever no I didn't do that uh, I remember and this happens I don't know if it still happens as it did but about two weeks before the first day of school you would get your schedule in the mail obviously now you get it over email or some type of school yeah. portal but that would be a day where you would call people you haven't talked to in like eight to ten weeks hey uh, instant a- AOL instant messenger was a thing and you would reach out to your friends <laughs> Boomer. And you would say hey these are my this is my schedule you would post your schedule on your as right. your away message as your profile uh, on your on your account that's some um, boomer thing yeah. to do. Yeah, but, but this really. This generation don't do that. We post on Instagram. Comment classes together. Yeah. So it's the same method. It's the same method. Or same thought, just a different method. We would, I would throw a big net to see, like, who am I going to prepare myself for? And it would always be, it would always be like, a little disconcerting because all my friends were really smart. And I was an average student. Um, still am. And mm. I remember being like, oh, this is going to be a rough year. I used to, like, text people that were, like, older than me and be like, did you have this teacher? Tell me everything <laughs> about them. Do they actually assign summer reading? Because I didn't do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so summer reading, now, now my understanding is is that there's just a list of books you can read. Um, and you don't have to read it? And you have to read a book off that One list. And really? then potentially you could just say, I'm reading another book, which is pretty interesting. There used to be two books that you'd have to read back and in the like day when I was. You'd have to write, uh, yeah two or three page paper on it and uh historically in my life that happened right about now about four or five days before the end of the summer <laughs> yeah and that's when you did it mm-hmm. last mm-hmm. minute that you, like, i used to look it up before oh i used to look it up in spark notes <laughs> so i would i would have the book all summer and then i would reach out to my friends who had already read it and i would spend time with them for two or three days and I would read their paper, and I would try to write my own version of it. Uh, that's really smart. When I was in high school the last few years, it wasn't a report. You would be, like, in a group like this, and you'd be, like, have a conversation on it. And the teacher would walk by and, like, see, like, <laughs> what, Ooh, what like, you what said. You about? So, like, I would let everyone in my group talk. And then when I heard the teacher, like, come by, I'd be like, yeah, I totally agree with what you just said. <laughs> and then she'd be like. A plus. Don't That's do that. Insanity. Don't do that. Yeah, so if, if you've ever heard me, which obviously if you're listening to this podcast, you've been a part of our youth group, you've interacted with me. One of the one of the big regrets, it's so silly, um, was that I became a Christian going into high school, but there were certain things I was just so not ready to let the Lord like work in me. Mm-hmm. And one of the things was I like hardened my heart towards the Lord and like cheating on anything involved with school. Mm. It was a pretty solid cheater on tests and quizzes and book reports and projects and all that stuff and it's something i really regret but like now as an adult and all these years being out of school i always look at like the timeline of all right leading up to the beginning of september being a school year and i always like you're such a fool for not reading a book a few pages a day you would have been done with it you would have been able to share your own thoughts in a paper that would have taken you i don't know an hour maybe two um, and I, it was just, it was such, such a poor witness <laughs> yeah. to my friends. Cause like, here I am a Christian, <laughs> but like, nah, like, give me your answers. Let me see them. I want to spend the minimal amount of effort. 
and uh, really it hurt me in the long run because in college I got my butt kicked. But also like not doing it, like you probably felt like anxiety from not doing it. Like I used to get anxious, be like, oh my gosh, I have to play it off that like I did the assignment and I didn't and I get myself anxious about it. But like you said, it took five, ten minutes a day to just read. Yeah, it was poor. It was poor, poor all around because you li- when you cheat, when you lie, you live this fake reality. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like I'm trying to I'm trying my best to believe my reality is real, but it's such a lie. And that and the work and like as corny as it may sound, the work ethic that you kind of develop in high school carries out through college and even through your actual career. So like some of the things, like I used to be the world's biggest procrastinator in high school and I would wait till till the last minute to do anything. And I had, again, like I was, I was more so um, in the sense of like, I was able to catch on really quickly and stuff with school things. So I used that to my advantage. So I was able to kind of just like half do a good job for a lot of stuff and then now in my actual career those are stuff that I still struggle with today and like even like Nick like you know like I'll, I'll be stuck here for three weeks doing notes for work that I could have finished four months ago and like so the stuff that you develop the habits that you develop in high school they if you don't take action to change them now they will very well carry on with you throughout the next 15 20 years of your life yep. Yeah, we, we don't believe it in the moment, but it, a discipline, right? Part of being disciplined is you you train for, for muscle and for reflex. And so when you don't develop that at a younger age, it's harder to do when you're older. doesn't mean it's impossible, but it definitely becomes more challenging, more difficult. And you have to make more sacrifices to kind of accomplish it later on in your life. And so when I went to college, uh, I went studied the Bible, studied to become a pastor. It was like, I can't cheat. I won't allow myself to cheat. I made this commitment before the Lord. And so by not cheating, um, making that commitment, I, I really had to work so much harder than other people around me, sitting up reading, planning out my reading times, planning out my study times. And it was all different and all new, and it was really, really challenging. And if I had just developed that over time as a young person, right, like I would have been able yeah. to do it much easier. So it really, it really just spited myself. And so here you are, you're getting ready for the school year. And a uh, couple of things that come to mind. Uh, like, yeah, what are some ways that, like, w- if the three of us can come up with some ways of, like, how to have, like, a productive, good start to the school year, like, what are some tips that you guys would give students? Mel? <laughs> I mean, I guess the biggest thing is, like, just discipline. I feel like I didn't notice the value of discipline until I was an adult. Mm-hmm. And, like, now as an adult, I have so much more free time, I guess you could say, like, outside of work, that, like, discipline could actually, believe it or not, be a little bit easier. And I feel like, actually, discipline in high school is a lot. Like, you have school. If you have a job, you have a job. You have sports. And it's like, okay, how am I going to discipline myself to – sit down and not look at my phone for two hours i'm gonna sit there and do my homework or spend 30 minutes not on my phone i'm gonna you know have my devotional with the lord or whatnot it's all discipline yeah one of the the key discipline areas discipline areas uh is for me i love i like get a second win late at night and it was one of those things i learned in college which is my nights affect my mornings and so I couldn't imagine being a, a teenager now and having my phone and having distractions. Um, and so just like a real plan to be like, hey, at 9 o'clock, I'm really starting to wind down. By 10 o'clock, I'm sleeping. Or, you know, whatever, whatever kind of scope you need. Because, one, developmentally, it's so important to have rest. <laughs> and if you want to have a bad week have consecutively late nights and mm-hmm. early mornings and it's just like you you're stuck in mud every single day emotionally you're not you're not with it in your friendships in 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 your schoolwork you're not operating at your fullest potential uh when your parents tell you hey you know this is expectation you kind of feel that's nagging versus accountability and so um nights affect our mornings and and something that the lord really worked on me when i was in college Obviously, I wish I had this as a reflex in, in high school was uh, 
I want to give God my best. And so in order to give God my best, like I, I know what works. I know what works, how much rest I need, you know, what I need to eat, what I, what I need to plan my day out with. Uh, by this point, if you're in high school, you kind of know some of the things and you're still learning middle school. There's much to learn and some of it's trial and error, but, uh, yeah, that discipline of rest is super important when to go to bed, when to like, I'm, I'm a proponent of not having your cell phone with you in like your own personal space, like leave it out in the kitchen, whatever your family thinks is a good idea. I know that might sound like crazy to you, (laughs) but nothing good's going to happen from having it all night like buy an alarm clock for 15 bucks use that instead of your cell phone yeah so like i feel like i had the opposite issue in high school where i slept too much like i'd go to bed at like 10 o'clock at night and then i would wake up at seven in the morning go to school and i'd come home and i'd take a nap from like 3 p.m to like 7 p.m no, like it was sad. I, I slept Did you have mono? So much. That's no. Insane. I got Did diagnosed with mono? Lyme's disease and that's oh, that what makes happened. A lot of sense. But like I slept so much, but like I missed out on a lot because I was always tired. Yeah, but you needed to rest. If you imagine if you didn't rest. Yeah, you'd be I mean like yeah, but it was bad. Like then I had the anxiety of I had 2 hours to like do my homework and get ready for school. I was doing like half energy for my homework. I was showing up to work every or er, showing up to school every single day late. Oh gosh. So it's like also like I needed that discipline of like getting up on time. And like now in my adulthood, like when I have work in the morning, I make sure I get there on time. Mm-hmm. But like I'm waking up like the last possible second. Yeah, it may sound lame now, but these years go by really fast. So like the middle school and high school years fly by. And again, like I can't emphasize enough, like having like a good set routine and um, and like Nick was saying, like taking care of your body and developing habits now that will set you up for the future. Because, again, it seems far away, but it's not far away. And before you know, you'll be in college, you'll be starting a career, and like the things that you develop now will help you for the future. So again, like having like a good routine and actually like taking the time to like learn in school, again, not only focusing on like, what's the quickest way I could get this done or cheat off of my friend or go on spark notes. Like Ouch. Mel did, no, but I mean everybody has. Do done as that. I say, but, not as I do. <laughs> but like, if you really take the time to like read and to write good papers and to actually do your work well, it will help you. It will help you. It is beneficial for you. And you don't want to hear that now, and you're probably rolling your eyes, but take it from me. I'm very wise. Yeah, the scriptures in Psalm Psalm 90, uh, verse 12. It says, "So teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom." That we would understand that there is one constant um, resource that everyone is allotted, and that's time, right? And so uh, one of the, the key areas of discipline and growth as a young person is to learn how to utilize our time to the best of its ability. And we see it uh, less as a sixth grader, more as an eighth grader. It becomes shockingly crazy as an 11th and 12th grader that how quickly the school year goes Right? The first market period takes time. The second market period goes really quick. And then all of a sudden you feel like it's the end of the school year. The summer goes by way too quick. It's like how, do, how are we to, to utilize time to the best of its ability? And that's to be proactive, to have a plan. And, and so we're, as, as believers, right, as followers of Jesus, uh, growing in our relationship with the Lord does not happen by accident. It happens purposefully. It happens with intentionality. Uh, and so we, uh, we see this in the rhythms of life, the Lord gives us like, hey, it's important for you to set aside time for rest, literally uh, Sabbath. And so finding time where like, yes, you're busy, you're working, you're doing good things, but you're taking intentional time for rest, right? Uh, especially time for worship, right? To carve out times when you look at your schedule in your week. It's important. God, God does this important thing where he says, you come together as the people of God and you come together for worship and singing songs, coming together for prayer, studying the scriptures, every generation doing this. And so um, so a part of your pre- preparation for the school year is, all right, like Sunday mornings are sacred. We're setting that si- time aside. I'm going to be with my family. Maybe your parents don't come to church and maybe this is an opportunity this school year to invite them, invite them into that. Uh, we're looking forward. We're going to have our Sunday Bible study back at uh, 9 a.m. And so Woo-hoo. that's going to happen. 9 a.m. and 1045 services are going to resume on the 18th of September. So looking forward to that. Uh, the school year for Thursday nights, we always say it every year, is that 
uh, youth group, it really becomes what you make of it, mm -hmm. how much time you invest in it. If this becomes your second home, this is a really special place. And so when you make Thursday nights a time where you're like, I'm coming, I'm gonna invite my friends, I'm going to, to make this a place for middle schoolers. We've moved it up just a little bit, 515 to 645. Intentionally, we want we want that time to really matter and to, to get everybody together. And then high school this year, we're bringing back dinner. Dinner. Oh, I can't wait to eat. So six forty five to nine o'clock every every <laughs> Thursday night. Uh, our our wait, high school. When you said home. we're having dinner, you literally paused and stopped and looked at me. Yeah. Why? Because <laughs> we love to eat. Well, the reason the reason why the reason why why I paused and looked at these guys because they one they were in high school when we would do that. It's only recently that we stopped doing dinner, uh, within COVID and everything. Uh, and the reason why we did that, it was just it was way too much. We kind of didn't really understand the virus much. And but what we do notice is that uh, our time around the table of getting to know you guys is so beneficial. So having dinner at high school group not giving you any other reason like hey i can't miss i can't come tonight i haven't eaten dinner yet it's like no no come we're eating dinner together around the table uh we're chopping it up we're asking you a thousand questions and so i, I looked at them one because they like to eat but two <laughs> because it's a special time it's a special time where you get to know your leaders better and they get to know you better i mean i totally yeah. agree i remember like when i was in high school and i came to youth group like that was the time i loved the most because like Generally, I feel like in youth group now, like you see kids like they're playing the game, but they're not like really socializing with each other. And if they're on the side, like they're on their phones, like we used to just sit and talk to each other and like joke yeah. around. And those were the times like you really build relationships with each other and your leaders. Like I got to know yeah. you and guys like, the most through that time. And the relationships. So don't so don't sleep on youth group. Well, is that's a term that people say now. So don't either. Boomer. Don't sleep. Don't sleep on youth group Boomer. while you're, especially while you're in high school, because the relation, like, if you bring your friends with you to youth group, or if you already have friends that you go to school with that are in youth group, these are friends that are really going to be pev like pivotal in your development and your growth, and these are people that you can lean on, you know, and these are people that understand. Um, that on you know that you have common ground with and youth group and the relationships that I've even formed in youth group over a decade ago these are friends that I still have today mm -hmm. and these are youth group is very important and again like I wanna I wanna I forgot where I was going with this but I anyway, was just gonna say yeah. like I feel like they <laughs> I we don't just, usually let her talk that much <laughs> we're like all right Nicole oh, your time's up I was just going to say, like, I feel like they think as, like, leaders, we're like, oh, like, bring your friends because the, we want to be, like, weird and be like, bring your friends. Which, no. like, yes, we want to meet your friends. But, like, for me, like, the grade above me when I was in youth group was all my friends. And there was, like, 30 of them. So, like, me included, there was, like, almost 31. 31. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, those, like, people, like, I'm still just as close friends with them. Like, I'm seeing some of them, you know, travel the world. I'm sure. seeing some of them, like, job promotions, getting married, having kids. It's weird. Yeah. But it's also, like, really amazing. Like, those relationships started in youth group. Yep. And, like, even outside of youth group, we were hanging out all the time. Like, youth group would end and we'd be like, so we're going to apps after? Like, the, like, yeah, <laughs> disgusting. Don't recommend. No, but I do like, recommend. Applebee's is disgusting. But anyways, but, like, generally – the relationships you like grow in youth group like yeah i think there's something special yeah and they're like lifelong friendships and it's it's important <gasps> rude <laughs> anyways rude uh, next phone rang but anyway it's, it's fine. important to have fun in high school too you know you're still a kid and it's you know i would say like participate like if you have a sport you want to do if you, there's a club i mean there's a fine line of burning yourself out and participating in things but like choose something that you like to do whether yep. it's a club or a sport and i i strongly encourage make time to come here on thursday nights because this is where you're going to get a lot of your support a lot of encouragement and you are welcomed loved and cared for here bring yeah. your homework we so, don't care so we do care i don't want to see your homework ah, we can bring it, uh, <laughs> bring it. we'll help you <laughs> there's a couple of things um the way that we have decided youth ministry student ministry here sixth grade through 12th grade looks like is one it's highly relational and so we want to be with you we want to hang out with you and so 
between Sunday mornings and Thursday nights, that's not the only time you can spend time with your leaders and your friends. You could always get together, hang out, do a small group. All that stuff is on the table. But at least getting to spend Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. for Bible study and then Thursday night, there's some familiarity. There's a little bit of regularity in seeing each other. And then additionally, um, we see that not only is it relational, but when we say bring your friends, it's because some of you would say, just like the leaders, we're Christians. Jesus has changed my life. I want to follow God. Um, but I don't know how to really share my love of God with my, with my friends. And, and, and so youth group is just like a very basic opportunity to do that. This is a place where we talk openly about who Jesus is, his love for you. And it's an opportunity for you to have a, a place where you can bring your friends and say, hey, like, this is important to me. Maybe this, is, maybe this would be important to you. Uh, furthermore, there's, there's service opportunities. And so not only is youth group, and every, every time we get together, you hear Jesus loves you, he cares for you, he has a special plan for you. Uh, that's on Thursday nights. But then on Sunday mornings, uh, we grow as disciples. We, we, we learn more about God from the word of God, from the Bible, to study it ask questions around the table, have bagels together. I mean, these are these are special times set aside that when we do them right, there's an opportunity for outreach and discipleship. And and when we grow personally, this is really good. It's a good rhythm for our lives. And so, uh, so yeah, I, I really want to encourage people that this year would be a year where, where we plan these things out, where not only are we finishing our summer reading, not only are we, uh, we picked out our, our first day of school outfit, um, <laughs> and we have our Dixon Cute notebooks. Dixon Ticonderoga number two pencil sharpened. Do you that was people still use pencils? That was very specific. It's I was gonna say like the, the cute pencil. like notebooks. I used to get so excited to pick out like specific binders. I used to get yeah, me excited for the school year. Wait, but okay, question Do people now. still use pencils? I agree that that is the pencil. But I don't know if people still use pencils. I think they do. The, pen the pencil companies really have taken no. a big hit recently. Anything, they definitely have taken a hit, but I wouldn't say no one uses them. They no, definitely they still them. write in school. So we what? want you. We want to hear. I know, we know you all have these fancy <laughs> Chromebooks, but we want to know what's your writing utensil of yeah, choice. Yeah, I want. I Are want, you a, a, just a blue or a black uh, Bic pen? Or no, no, the G. You know the G. G those, gel. Those G pens, the G number tens. There's nothing like those is. pens. Like, Listen, the only G4. right answer to do your math homework is with a pencil. No. You can't do that on a Chromebook. You can't do that with a pen because if you make a mistake, you just scribble you it have out. To, and that's sloppy. I understand they sell mechanical <laughs> pencils, but there's no reason you have to buy them. Yeah, I yeah. would not go near a mechanical pencil with a 10-foot pole. Dramatic. <laughs> we uh, we want to hear from you. What's your writing utensil of choice? Are you a five-star notebook kind of uh, guy? Are you a composition book person? Uh, three ring binder, three inch, one inch, flimsy back, hard back. Also, I want to hear. I also want to hear something else. I want to hear what's the best milk combination: pizza and milk, spicy Chinese chicken, Chinese food and Oof. milk, spaghetti and milk. Oh. Chinese food and milk is like top tier. Chinese food and milk is like a top tier, or a hot Cheeto and milk. I'm just glad you also, didn't say salami Also, we want to hear... And salami and milk. The, no. Who's your gastrointestinal doctor? <laughs> <laughs> Mine is in Red Bank. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. We're, we are... But seriously. <laughs> we are looking forward to it. We really do want to hear from you all. We want to encourage you. Uh, God has a plan for you. This is an awesome opportunity to be pray, praying for your school year, uh, to set aside, of course, discipline. We didn't touch about it, touch on it too much, but like creating a time r first thing in the morning before you get to school to spend a little bit of time with the Lord in, in reading and in prayer. Uh, you, you begin to see God's hand more at work when you do that strategically and intentionally. So we hope that you set that time aside. If you need help from your youth leaders, ask us. Um, yeah, we'd be happy to do that. Uh, we are... So glad uh, and looking forward to a school year that's going to be filled with lots of fun, maybe a winter retreat, definitely Woo! some series, some events, uh, opportunities to serve at Middletown Helps Its Own, Christmas party, Thanksgiving. Apple picking, cookie bay. Wow. Girls Pumpkin only. pinking. Picking. <laughs> Pinking. <laughs> Give us some ideas. We're open to them. Yeah, we want to come. We want to come into your lives and show up. And Sounds we want <laughs> to like. We just want to be there. Like when your parents are making you lunch, we want us. We want some bites. 
if you feel like alert. you're being annoying asking your leaders to hang out, we feel the same way when we ask you. All right, one more one more qu serious question before we end. Uh, what's your first snack of the school year? Are you doing? Are you bringing a snack pack? Right? Are you bringing an oatmeal cream pie, oh. a cosmic brownie? I don't do you think have? Eat that stuff do you like have that. the the weird uh, pretzels with the cheese? Um, Ew. with yeah. that with that little, red, that little red stick. Dunkaroos. That's so gross. Uh, Dunkaroos. peanut butter, peanut butter cheddar crackers. Don't you forget. You know what's really good? If you go to high school north, you get a chicken patty sandwich, and you get that's cool, not a snack. A sweaty. Cool ranch, you get Cool Ranch Doritos, and you crush them a little bit, and then you put them in the chicken patty sandwich, and then you have milk. We're yeah. really excited for for the jailhouse <laughs> recipes Nicole has for you next week. Wait, you know that. <laughs> You do know that the high schools <laughs> all have the same catering business, right? Like, they all have that. Okay, so if you go to high school, put Doritos in your chicken patty sandwich and have a chocolate milk. She's like, shout out Middletown North. Sponsor, <laughs> Sponsor me. <laughs> all right. Well, with all that being said, we, we are praying for you. We, we are looking forward to an awesome, awesome, awesome school year. And uh, we want to, be, to remind you that this is a place where you should feel welcome, loved, and cared for. Thanks for giving us the opportunity. Why don't you let us say it. The whole point is that you're supposed to say welcomed, I'm supposed to say loved, and Mel's supposed to say care, care for. for this is a place we should feel welcome, love, and care for. <laughs> Thank you.